Uh, so, Tim, let's get the New York Post out. Not exactly a left-wing rag. Talking about the insanity of all of this, talking about the fact that this guy was, was, was ID'd, uh, somebody who, was, who, who had had, uh, you know, sick, uh, sick visions of, of slaughtering, slaughtering people. Um, they knew it. Guy still was carrying around an AR-15, was still able to purchase, I guess, a sniper yep. rifle, uh, even after that. I mean, the, uh, gun laws in this country, uh, uh, I mean, my God, a decade or so after Sandy Hook, and, 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 and just the, the cascading of violence across this country over the past decade. I mean, it, it, I'm kind, I find it hard to believe it takes a shooting in somebody's backyard to change their mind on it, yeah. but... I'm glad it did, but still, my God. Well, for Golden, I, you know, Golden has been a kind of Democratic rep that veers away from the party on certain things, and, and I think it's good for Democrats to have people like Golden, right. who is more of a, a populist kind of uh, a Democrat rather than a coastal elite like Heilman. But, right. um, you know, here's the thing. How would Heilman do in rural Maine? A, yeah, a, yeah, who exactly. knows what he would do. Uh, yeah. But eventually, like, reality has to intervene on this stuff. And I, I know you were, Joe. I was. Like, right. I, I lived by Columbine in 99. You know, maybe in 1999 it makes sense to think, oh, you know, concealed carry weapons, good right. guy with a gun, right? Like, there are all these different, like, theories right. that maybe make sense in 99. That was 24 years ago. Right. And we have all of these shootings. There are no shootings in Japan. We have the new Speaker of the House out there saying, well, this is actually not about guns, but it's about the heart. And it's like, well, what? <laughs> do Japanese people not have any problem in their hearts? Right. Do we all need to convert them I mean, to he's saying the American heart is so much more corrupt than... Right. British hearts or German hearts or French hearts or Japanese. It's, 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 it's crazy. And you are right. I mean, I was, I was, uh, you know, A plus with the NRA when I served, uh, still believed, uh, you know, I was glad Heller came down the way it did, that the right to keep and bear arms means the right to keep and bear arms. But it's been taken to such extremes. And I changed my position on a lot of things after Sandy Hook, yeah. not just because of Sandy Hook, but because of Aurora, because of Virginia, because of all, because of all of the mass shootings that happened then. But as we've been saying this morning, even since then, in the 10 years since, the number of shootings have just exploded. And, and, and by the way, here at AR-15s, always the weapon of choice. I'll just say it for crazy people that, that, that want to go out and, and kill humans. The AR-15 was, was uh, invented. Uh, to be a more effective killing machine of human beings in the Vietnam War because the weapons they were using often uh, would not work effectively. They were too heavy. It's too hard to reload. They often jammed in critical points. So a guy made uh, an AR-15, said it's light, and it's just easy to just slaughter humans at, at an extraordinarily rapid pace. So that's the AR-15, and I, I'll tell you, I, I just I don't know how long. I don't know how long we're going to continue seeing this and seeing the number of mass shootings. you got a new speaker saying, oh, let's not talk about mass shootings right now. Now's not the time. Really, we've already had 566 mass shootings. We only have 365 days of the year. When the F are we going to talk about this? Yeah, there's a, I, and you have to go through this all the time. I mean, we. this is the other thing I think in the last segment you were talking about the 90 percent. Uh, the one encouraging thing I've seen recently is, well, we did have the bipartisan uh, gun right. bill. It's something. It was, it was not as good as it needed to be, but it was something. But it's good. It but, was a good yeah, start. In Colorado yeah. Springs, right after yeah. after the shooting in the gay bar in Colorado Springs, Colorado Springs threw out the, a Republican mayor. Colorado Springs is like home of focus on the family and the Air Force, right. a very conservative community. They threw out the the mayor that was opposed to red flag laws, replaced them with a different with a different person. So like, even in conservative communities, people are sick of this. Well, the, the, the congressman that represented John that represented uh, Parkland very conservative uh, Republican voted uh, for the assault weapon ban yeah. absolutely no consequence to him politically in the primary or in the general election so this whole idea is oh you can't vote in conservative areas for uh, a so-called assault weapons ban and uh, without paying the price that's just not true well and this is why the the last piece of legislation is important is not that the substantively it's going to change very much but it's that it was a became an object lesson where hey you could vote for this thing right. you could vote for a gun piece of, of gun safety legislation and not 
uh, and not have you uh, lose your job over it. I, you know, you talk about the the worldwide statistics. You know, Joe, I, I, dating myself a little bit here. I'm very, I think, very beginning of when I first started working in journalism, I was at the Economist magazine working in London in like 1990. It was the first time I looked at that someone at a magazine that did an internet like very right. rare in those days would do international comparative stuff in it. And, you know, back then, 1990, 35 years ago, was the first time I looked at, ever saw statistics that looked at the rates of gun violence uh, in the, across the industrialized world. Right. Asia, Europe, Western Europe, country by country in the United States. And back then, that magazine was making the point that you're making now, which was the United States, even then, uh, was it was stunning to look at the difference in uh, in, in, by, in the use of, of, of handguns and, and other, and not as many AR-15s back then, but right. the, the gun, rates of gun violence were much higher then. We have 35 years of data that basically says in Iceland, France, the United States, uh, North Africa, uh, Central Asia, and, and, and East Asia, they're, they're, you don't have anything like America's rates of gun violence. And you have to make some kind of very weird argument for a kind of dark American exceptionalism to kind of claim that the difference is not the, the, the obvious difference, which is that the gun laws here are horrible. And the gun right. laws in all those places, they vary to some degree. Some of those places have a little bit more liberal uh, regimes and some have a little bit more, more permissive regimes and some have a right. little bit more restrictive regimes. But that is the difference. It's the we, operative difference we, we, over we, decades it, of data. It, it is. And we stand alone. I mean, now it's mental health. Before it was video games. It was violent movies. There's always excuse. None of the excuses hold any water, Jonathan, because... We stand alone. We really do stand alone when, when, when you look at the, the continued slaughter. And you've got Republicans who have said, you know what? We're going to keep getting checks from the NRA. We're going to keep allowing the hedge funds that own these gun companies to make millions and millions of dollars in profits. And we're going to stand by and say there's nothing we can do while Baptist churches in Texas get shot up, while country music festivals in Las Vegas get shot up. Uh, while uh, schools in Connecticut and Texas get shot up. And in Maine, here you go, in rural Maine, you've got family night at a bowling alley, and it turns into a slaughterhouse. And Republicans the next day are saying, we don't want to talk about it. There's nothing we can do. It's the American heart. And this is what the speaker has said. Just if you really think about what the speaker said, you look at the numbers worldwide. The new speaker of the House believes the American heart is the most corrupt heart in the Western world. More corrupt than the British the heart. World. The whole world believes that the American heart, the new Speaker of the House thinks the American heart is more corrupted and more dirty and more prone to violence than any other heart in the world. How offensive. Yeah, it's the headline, The Onion Runs Every Time There's a Mass Shooting, where it says, you know, that there's nothing to be done about this as the only country where this ever happens. Uh, and, and that is, it's, it is so frustrating that, that nothing changed. Yes, there was bipartisan legislation last year. It's a step in the right direction. Um, but, Simone, there's no momentum right now for anything else. There hasn't been since the Republicans took over uh, the House of Representatives back in January. To Joe's point, the new speaker blown, blamed uh, the American heart, the human heart. Uh, he also is someone who said we need to do more on mental health funding, but he voted against that. Uh, previously in his career, um, and he made a point of saying this is not the time to speak about guns. This is not the time to speak about guns. Here's the only headline. Here's the only headline now. No way to prevent this. This is the only nation where this regularly happens. Uh, and he said, "If not, we can't do it now, Simone. So I ask you, if not now, when? When do we talk about guns? Mm, I mean, if not now, when exactly, Jonathan? Now is, in fact, the time. Look, I, I, members of Congress... Every single member of Congress is up for re-election when it comes to the House in 2024. If you are someone out there listening in your car right now on Sirius XM or watching this in your office or at home before, you know, you get your day started, you should really take a look at what your member of Congress has said about specifically assault weapons. We're talking about weapons of war, semi-automatic weapons. We're not talking about regular handguns. I'm from Nebraska. We hunt, too. We're talking about weapons of War. You need to take a look at what your member of Congress has said, what your member of Congress has said since the Lewiston shooting, and 
if they are not on the record anywhere, you need to pick up the phone, call that congressional office, and ask where they stand. And if you do not like it, I encourage folks out there to vote to to make decisions with their vote come 2024, because that is the only way things are going to change at the federal level. I will note, though, for everyone, that America's policy, in, in my estimation, is made in state legislatures across the country. And there were bills in Maine as soon as this, most recently as June, where Maine Maine's House and Maine State Senate declined to institute a 72-hour waiting period, declined universal background checks, even though more than 70 percent of Mainers, as, again, as recent as this June, had support for both of those measures. There was a state senator, and I'll end with this, who was quoted in an article at the time, and she said, State Senator Ann Carney, she's a Democrat, she urged the Senate at the time to approve the bill, and she said, creating a buffer between someone having a suicidal crisis and access to a gun can be the difference between life and death. And months later, look what happened in Maine. So yes, this is about mental health, and it's also about guns. Yeah. It, it